A warm welcome to your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Tuesday, May 31. The disciplinary hearing against educator Alban Bab was adjourned today until June 8. Bab's representative, trade unionist Caswell Franklin, said the hearing was adjourned because the witness was unable to attend today. On April 5, Bab and his colleague Pedro Shepard were sent on half-pay leave for six months for contesting the January 19 general elections as Democratic Labour Party candidates. Shepard has confirmed that his disciplinary hearing is set for June 7. The high rate of diabetes, heart attacks and strokes that continue to plague the Barbados population is a major worry for local authorities. At a press conference to mark the end of May Measurement Month today, Principal and Poor Vice-Chancellor of the Cavill Campus, Professor Clive Landis, revealed worrying data while urging Barbadians to take their health seriously. So we compiled these statistics uh, for the country. And the statistics for stroke and heart attack um, are, you know, fairly alarming. Mm. So there are, um, there are 10 heart attacks per week in this country on average, and there are 14 strokes per week on average. So that's actually two a day mm -hmm. in terms of strokes. And these statistics are actually rising. Um, so when you have a heart attack or a stroke, I don't need to tell you um, what impact that has. It can be fatal it almost always has a very significant impact on the person, their family, um, uh, their income. It, it's, it's really quite devastating. Now, all the persons who have strokes and heart attacks, over 90% have high blood pressure. And so this simple thing to measure your blood pressure on a regular basis is really critical. UWI lecturer and hypertension specialist Dr. Kenneth Connell urged every household in Barbados to get a home blood pressure monitoring machine. He again cautioned the island is facing an NCD crisis and the time for action is now. We are at risk in this country if we do not take the effort to reverse this to cause our health system to almost come to a grinding halt. And this is something that we have to seriously consider because we also have to, to counteract the impact of climate change. You know, we still have a pandemic that we don't know when it will finish. And we have rates that are increasing in, in this country. So, so, like I said from the very beginning, this cannot be business as usual because we are certainly in the middle of a crisis. A major cleanup exercise is planned for Jubilee Gardens in the city. Amid growing complaints about the unsightly state of the gardens, Joanne Haig, the communications consultant for the Barbados Tourism Investment Inc., today met with vendors who were relocated to the area last year. Haig said while some vendors have been doing their best to keep the area clean, some are falling short. And the problem is being compounded by some homeless persons who frequent the area. This is a collaborative effort and this is the start. Uh, BTI, we would, we're in the process of trying to clean up this park, so we felt we needed to speak to the vendors first so that certain things will have to happen. One of the suggestions that um, markets made is for vendors to get what we call collapsible tables, and so they can remove them or store them, and everything kind of looks a little bit more uniform. This is not the permanent home for the vendors. This is a temporary solution until we can find other spaces, but while they're here, we want them to remember it is a park. We also want to speak to the homeless society to see how best we can help people on the street. These people need help. You know, they need help yesterday. Barvin President Alistair Alexander says vendors are committed to keeping the area clean. He also appealed for help for homeless people. We have spoken to our members, those who are present, and we'll be speaking to those, the, the ones who are absent. Uh, we will be making sure that they get the message that they have to play their part in keeping this, 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 this park, this Jubilee Gardens, um, clean and nice. Uh, it must be aesthetic, aesthetically pleasing as people pass, as people view this is a very important part of Bridgetown. We understand that it is, they, they have all, we have also a problem with the vagrants. We would like a, 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 a of course, we would like a, 
Are, are, you, are you making a resolution concerning these persons? We ought to, to, to love everybody and to, and to take care of those who may fall through the cracks, the social um, net for whatever reason, right? But they, they cannot be allowed to destroy the city. There's regional and international news after this short break. More oxygen means more energy, means more adventure. Pure Oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Pure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water. Caribbean Cool is a refreshing juice drink that contains 100% vitamin C that you can enjoy any time of the day. It has a refreshingly awesome range of Caribbean flavors. Moby, orange, fruit punch, pineapple, sorrel, and pineapple coconut. Suitable for any occasion. Caribbean Cool. To regional news, Jamaica's tourism sector has bounced back and projections are for major growth this year. More on this report from Television Jamaica. 2021, Jamaica welcomed 1.8 million visitors. Based on marketing strategies and more flights confirmed from Europe, Director of Tourism Donovan White projects that for 2022, Jamaica will see 2.1 million visitors and earnings of over 3 billion US dollars. He says part of the reason is that revenue is outpacing visitor arrivals. They're staying 20% longer than before. Um, they're moving from um, seven and a half uh, nights per stay to now close to nine. Um, they, we are also, um, our uh, average revenue um, for the destination per visitor has moved somewhere from about 169 US dollars to about 185, 186. Um, so we're seeing longer stays, um, more spending. He recounts that the Omicron COVID-19 scare in January this year saw a slow start for the sector. However, expanding the tourism product to taking visitors out of the hotel rooms and into communities has resulted in greater interest from visitors. The rest of this year is expected to see continued increases. Further afield, the search is on in northeastern Brazil for people feared missing after landslides and flooding. Almost 100 persons are known to have died. Thousands have been displaced, losing all of their luggage. Rescue teams are working around the clock, recovering bodies and searching for those still missing. Thousands have been displaced, losing all of their belongings. Heavy rainfall began on Wednesday in Brazil's northeastern state of Pernambuco, flooding streets and triggering mudslides. Entire houses collapsed with the force of the water, while desperate neighbors helped firefighters dig up their loved ones under the rubble. This man lost his sister. The search parties found my sister's body there this evening. They found her and four other bodies. They're still looking for my brother-in-law. This is the fourth major flooding event in five months in Brazil. In February, more than 200 people died after torrential rains hit the city of Petrópolis, 80 kilometers from Rio de Janeiro. Meteorologists say a phenomenon called La Niña, which cools down the Pacific Ocean waters, helps explain the excessive rains in Pernambuco and other parts of northeastern Brazil. There is no doubt that climate change and the rise of temperature in the Atlantic Ocean are also responsible for these extremes. Cold weather, hot weather, droughts and rainfalls, they've all become more severe. Besides bad weather, poor urban planning in low-income neighborhoods in many Brazilian cities is also responsible for the number of deaths and the mudslides. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.